time we get to these all-time highs, you got to be very nimble uh, and uh, be very careful up there. Uh, support on the downside would be at 89, 43, 89, 83, 76, and 69. Pivot, 43.97, resistance at 03, 10, 18, and 24. Support below at uh, 89, 83, 76, and 69. All right. Good morning, some of the new folks that are here. We are trading mini S&Ps here. We are using our levels that we just gave out as a guide to the day. Uh, we adjust those. We can subtract from those. We can tweak them a little bit depending on the price action. We can even delete them sometimes, or we cannot use them at all. It all depends on what the market is doing on any given day. And that is all dependent on price uh, volatility. And uh, again, volatility comes and goes during the markets. Right now, it looks like we're scalping for about two to three points on our trades. Kind of keeps us in the game and also doesn't let us get too much trouble, especially with these new all-time highs. Being that the market continues to rally. Uh, welcome back there, Mark. Uh, L. Uh, by the way, Mark, L, uh, are you have your headset available today? Maybe? Put you back in the hot seat with my friend Don, who's going to be taking over in a little bit. Hope you had a fun time. Don was missing you a lot yesterday, that last week. He kept having to put in the, the levels himself, and he's like, this this is ridiculous. Where's Mark? Where's Mark? He's very happy. <clears throat> He's very happy you're back. All right, so yeah, <clears throat> I'm gonna hook up Don and a few here, and so if you can get get ready, I'll hook you up also. All right, market again on here on their highs. Again, welcome to some of the new folks that are here. We are trading futures, uh, uh, equity in uh, equity futures to be exact, uh, S and P's to be specific. Uh, we are many S and P's. Uh, we used to trade, uh, you know, the bigger ones, but they don't. They only trade on the floor of the exchange, and uh, well, that's not happening anymore, according to the uh, hierarchy of the exchange. They're not going to reopen the floor anymore. That's very sad, but it is what it is. So, what can we do? So we're here. Trading uh, from our cozy little offices or wherever you might be positioned, whatever that may be. All right. <clears throat> Let's see if there's any numbers coming out this morning here before we uh, get going. We have new home sales coming out here at the top of the hour at uh, 9 o'clock. And... Um, Basically, that's about it. We have a two-year note auction at noon Chicago time, which might or might not affect the S&Ps. The 10-year yield right now is at 137-ish. Is that where we're at? Yeah, that's where we're at, 137-ish. So kind of 164 handle, very low, uh, high, uh, high handle, low yield. You know how that works inversely. So we'll see what happens as we continue to uptick here, coming up here against our 03 area. Again, remember, these all-time highs are very arbitrary. There's no exact, you know, there's nothing to fall back on to say that they're solid levels to use. And again, we highly recommend making sure you keep your stops in place, <clears throat> especially on the upside, because, like I said, there's very... Uh, you know, with trend lines and uh, Fibonacci's and extensions and triangles and blah, blah, blah. I mean, they're very, you know, and look at that. It's, it's you know, it just seems like a one-way train here to the upside. <clears throat> uh, the VIX has to be solidly in the 15 handle or even lower. <clears throat> Somebody can let me know what the VIX is. I uh, wouldn't be surprised uh, at uh, it being at that low level. We like uh, VIX trading uh, in the low 20s, high 
high teens and uh, trading in the 15 areas is very, very low as we uh, swiftly come up here to our 03 area. It just so happens to be our uh, uh, settlement price as well. So again, just be patient, trade it, keep your stops in place. We're not loving any trades here. We are taking the 05 is also the uh, overnight high. So keep that in mind. Let's see what it wants to do. So market coming up here. Again, we have a number coming out here at the uh, top of the hour. So keep that in mind if you're trading. We don't like to have any positions on when numbers are released. see here and remember uh, so that the uh, number we got going is the uh new home sales coming out here at nine o'clock which could which could move the market a little bit we'll see <clears throat> investors are gearing up for a uh, most eventful week of the summer Ooh, with futures ticking lower ahead of a busy slate but now they're up or yeah and, uh, you know even level Um, the Fed is scheduled to meet on Wednesday. Oh, great. Tapering or inflation comments? Cool question mark. We will get a print printed a print on the Q2 GDP. Uh, that's coming out this week as well. Uh, while lawmakers uh, hope to advance an infrastructure deal uh, to a Senate vote. A lot of stuff happening this week as we come up here. Remember I said we have to be a little bit careful up here and keep your stops in place. We're not loving any of these trades that we put out as much as we want to stick with them. We just make sure you take your, uh, gets your stop triggered and that way you don't have to mess with any of this stuff up here. <clears throat> and again, we this is, I keep saying, it's very arbitrary up here. It's hard to get too excited about any any of these trades that we put on to the upside. So trade them small, uh, your smallest amount, and that way you don't get yourself in any kind of uh, big trouble at all. And wait for a opportunity to kind of, you know, looks playable or much better, have a better opportunity. As again, these new all-time highs are very tough to trade. I just can't more than reiterate how tough it is. Uh, all right, so let's see. Don't forget about earnings. This week also, 165 of the S&P 500 companies are due to report their biggest week of the season. Tech heavy, Elf, Google, Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and Microsoft uh, wow. uh, are, will be in the spotlight with the five companies comprising more than a fifth of the total cap mark of the S&P 500. The results will illustrate how large businesses are withstanding the pandemic with a recent uptick in inflation. So now this is going to be a busy week as far as earnings are concerned. I guess the market is telling you, well, it looks like they're going to be doing okay. Nothing to worry about. This will be a choppy environment for the rest of the year as markets deal with growth that isn't as strong. Uh, and the markets turn to potential withdrawal of policy support. Uh, you'd expect that the uh, spread of the Delta var variant would uh, put restrictions in place longer and uh, some supply bottlenecks uh, may last just a few more months. Good morning there, Robert. Can we repeat the levels in the chat box area, please? All right, Don, I'm gonna, hey, Don, are you okay to get uh, to get you on here? All right. And Mark, I'm gonna put you up here too. Okay. All right, uh, can, uh, 
Can you hear me? Yeah, there you go. That's what I wanted to say. Are you there? <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Mark, are you there? I'm here. All right. Well, the, the gang is all back together again. <laughs> I, I am glad he's back. <laughs> Don, you didn't like my job? <laughs> no, sir. I'll give, I'll give it back to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not qualified. <laughs> no. You were more than qualified, trust me. No, I guess so. <laughs> somebody uh, don't know that this Mark from California, the Don from Texas. They are uh, kind of helping me out here while I have to leave a little bit early this morning, and so uh, they're going to be taking you there through the rest of the morning. And if uh, they've been with us for a while, they understand what we're trying to do. They understand the methodology. Uh, they took our course, and so they understand what we're doing here. So if you have any questions, throw it by them. If you're afraid to ask me, I don't know why you would be afraid to ask me, but hey, you know, you can do ask them anyway. They know <laughs> what they're talking about. And they'll kind of just kind of hold your hand here through these all-time highs. It's amazing how the market just continues to keep going up, 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 up. There's no, there's no pullback whatsoever. I go away for a week and look what happens. Yeah, that's right. You see a 44 Jeez. handle. Oh my God. Well, we're down to a 42 handle. You would have liked that part of it. Jeez. Okay. Uh, uh, Kegler, uh, can you guys see the chat also? We'll get you uh, some info. Uh, we'll have uh, 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 we, we'll have um, Brad. Thank you. Uh, Brad, get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I need you guys. See, yeah, this is totally <laughs> okay. We had a very big uh, short cover rally uh, in the uh, Bitcoin overnight. And it's up like ten uh, percent. Got almost up to twelve and a half percent. Almost up to forty. They they're jamming people who were short over the last few weeks. Uh, got up to almost forty thousand overnight, and uh, some really. Uh, light trading but this is what happens at night if you're trading so they jam 12 for 12 and a half percent of one that's why you gotta love trading that right not uh you know it is what it is but uh, so they had that overnight happening um and um again the market is resilient it just keeps going up there's there's no you know we have the uh COVID situation that uh the numbers keep going up, so at some point, something you know might affect this market that might be negative uh, and sustain some kind of pullback. Remember, we said last week that there was hasn't been a five percent pullback in the market. It's the longest one of the longest streaks uh, that's been steadily going up without any kind of pullback. Um, and remember, if a five percent pullback, as, as as tough as that might sound, is like um, you know sending the S&Ps down 200 and, you know, 220 points, 230 points, something in that vicinity. So that's a, you know, it might seem like, oh, my God, that's a lot, but it's really not that much. And when we start going down, it will go down. We get some action, you know, like we did last at the beginning of the week on Monday. That was fun on Monday, and now look what's going on. All right, so if you are trading here, uh, the 7 was the overnight, well, it was the high from Friday, and we never eclipsed that. And so if you were trading, maybe you saw that, you were maybe added to your trade up there a little bit. Uh, that would have been not the worst idea. I think uh, the stop right above that would have been, it's like basically this what it went, retested that spike high from, well, I think it was after the close on Friday that they got that seven out. So, um, and then, you know, flushed it back down. So we have a number coming out here in, uh, about 17 minutes. So the Delta thing might be affecting the market. I don't know. The uh, uh, Obviously, the earnings this week uh, with, uh, with all these uh, big tech companies are going to be coming out this week as well. So we'll see if that happens. And we have the Fed coming out this week. What a great week. <laughs> I took the wrong week to come back. Yeah, the welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. Well, you know, you... You didn't miss anything on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday because you can see on the hourly chart there it was like a, just a rally every day. So that you know, you know, you don't, you don't like that. That I can tell you. Mm. Yeah. So most traders don't like rallies. I, I, I mean, I don't know why. I mean, there is there is. A, I don't know why. Just just leave it. Why? I mean, <laughs> the market should be able to trade both ways. We should be able to trade both ways. But it's a lot tougher to trade as a trader 
uh, rally markets than it is to trade uh, markets that are going down, which we call break markets, breaking markets. So whatever, it is what it is. All right. Um, so again, we we there's there was some resistance up there. Hopefully, some of you hung in there with that, only because you could have. I think. Uh, I think you could have. I think you could have made a good case. Remember, what we try to do are in our education course is give you reasons to trade, give you reasons to get exit strategies as well. It's not only getting into trades, but uh, more importantly is where uh, your exit strategy should be placed uh, um, and based upon um, price action. Uh, so, you know, there's, and we would suggest that you have reasons to get into trades and reasons also to exit trades. Uh, and, and when you find your reasons to exit a trade, that also gives you your entry point into the trade as well. So you kind of go backwards if you had to. Um, and uh, that way you keep yourself in the game and, and you feel comfortable in putting on a trade and you feel good about putting on a trade. The more reasons you have to put on a trade, the more, uh, you know, you feel, okay, I got a good chance at trying to make a little bit of money here and that's what we're doing in our education course and these two guys have, uh, have plenty of reasons to trade um they like to trade and uh, don has you know we have a five minute chart up there don has a minute chart up there that's how many trades he puts on you know but he did tell me don what happened last week he only had like three trades on by 9 30 what was going on it was just a slide. I just wasn't into it. <laughs> well, that's good too. Well, that's good. That's perfect. See, that's another reason not to trade. You know, we always keep saying, you know, we're kind of trying to give you reasons to trade, but then there are reasons not to trade. And uh, obviously if you're, you wake up and you just like me right now, I'm not really into it because I have to leave in a little bit. So I'm not going to get myself in any kind of trouble and I'm not going to start trading and having to worry about it since I'm leaving in a little bit. But uh, yeah, no, that's uh, again. Every everybody here trades differently. Everybody has different risk tolerances, and uh, how you handle it is an individualized thing. So whether you hear me say something or a trade, or whether you hear one of these guys say something to you, you got to take it with a grain of salt and always put it back into your trading style more than anything else. Okay, so we're just here to kind of guide you along because when I was trading up in my office, I was bored out of my mind at the end and it was really boring. So we started this trading room up here just so that we can have this camaraderie. Most of the time it's me talking, but today I'm, I'm so happy that you guys are here. We're taking yeah, Mark, over the show. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> right. Damn right. Mark, Mark's got to talk twice as much today since he's been gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that uh -huh. usually is not a problem for him. <laughs> you guys in the same office no no i'm in chicago mark is in uh la or la area and uh don is in texas we are we are a cross-country uh service here and we're all doing the same thing trading the same markets isn't that amazing so we used to be able to, when we were trading on the floor, we only had the people around us trading and the people who would, who do, around the world who would be trading would be calling up their desks and trading, you know, through uh, a desk that would put the order onto the floor. And that's why they had us guys trading on, on the floor so we could facilitate everybody's trades. Um, that now has gotten to the point where oh, everybody can trade. We have people from Australia. There you go. There's your shout out. And, uh, you know, obviously the other side of the pond there, not the other side of the world, but yes, the other side of the pond from the West Coast to the East Coast, they're all over. This is kind of fun. This is bring, there's a new dynamic to trading now that everybody has a computer and screen and could put up some charts and trade. So it's kind of fun. At the same time, it's risky, but you have to understand your risk, obviously, and that's what we're here to try to help. All right. So, yeah, uh, Don, you got any uh, thoughts on the market that you can share with uh, me before I leave? Uh, thoughts in what way? Numbers? Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, numbers. Yeah. What do you got as numbers as far as the numbers that I have and what you have? I had seven this morning. Yeah, so did I. I mean, I didn't. I, I put seven. I mean, I had seven, also because of that high. Because yeah. uh, you know, so I think that's why I thought it was a. Some of you might have traded it. Go ahead. I had seven, and I have uh, two, 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 
12, mm-hmm. 12, 12, 15, 15. And I've got another one in here somewhere. I'll have to, let's see, 4397. Uh, and I have a weight also. So as you can see, uh, what uh, you know, Don has his numbers, and he looks at mine, and you know, we can you. I, that's what I want everybody to do: is kind of take numbers that I have, numbers that you have, and and, and add to them, subtract from them, um, because that's what trading is all about: is, is sharing information. At least this is what this room is all about: is sharing information, right? Um, everybody looks at charts or everybody looks at markets just a little bit differently. And so you get my perspective and add it to yours. And then you maybe can, uh, you know, share and, and, and the levels and, and, and get something that's, uh, you know, that you can find to, uh, to either make your level better or not. And, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with sharing information. That's what we did when we were standing on the floor. So, all right, cool. So, all right. So, on the downside, what do you have? It's more important. At least we have some. Oh, let's see. On the downside, right off hand, I've got uh, 98. Uh, I've got also 97 stacked in there. Uh, let's see. Ninety one fifty to 91, somewhere in there. Uh, let's see. Then I've got 90, 89. They're all stacked in there pretty tight and 88. So somewhere in there, we ought to have a little support. All right. Uh, down at 86. All the way to uh, about 84.50. Then at 83. Then again at 81. I, I, I can give them to you all the way to zero if you want. But right. That, no, I understand. That's, that's, that's and no, but yeah. but uh, the, the, as long as, you know, he's got those areas of support, but they kind of match up with, uh, you know, what we've. Now, I, I could obviously do the same thing, give you like layers of support, yeah. but I'm trying to find levels that give us an opportunity to scalp. And then there's always a backup level beneath or above it. So that helps you kind of hopefully stay, in, you know, helps us stay in the game. So. That's why you have these layers of levels that Don's giving you, but it also, when my I give you a level, it's in the, um, you know, it's it, there's a backup to it, so that's that's why we, you know, backup allows us if we're, if things are going bad and we're not, you know, not getting the decent bounce we're looking for, it allows us to at least scratch a trade once in a while because, you know, we're not getting the rotation we were looking for at a certain level. And uh, there's the backup here to me this morning on the upside was the seven. I thought that we would stop there and come back. And it's kind of what happened there. All right. So, yeah. Uh, All right, guys. So I'm going to just remember, we have a number coming out here in uh, top of the hours in about seven minutes uh, and uh, new home sales. So see what we don't like to trade numbers. It's not uh, our favorite. uh, scenario here uh we, if there's going to be a number that's out of whack uh, they'll give me there's going to be plenty of opportunity to trade it after the number is released so you'll have uh, a chance to trade the volatility after that number comes out but uh, i've always uh traded and seem to find a um uh, every time i had a position on when i was trading it always seemed to go against me and and when I was trading and the number was released. So it's it's not fun to have the, the market run away from you and you're the wrong way. And now you're trying to decide, well, what do I do now? Do I get out of it or do I double up here? Is it going to come back? What do I? So, and let's, let's take that little like mindset out of it and just wait till the number is released and then trade. Believe me, I, I've been any kind of like goofiness in your head that you're thinking about. I've gone through and I've had that experience. So uh, let's, I'm trying to eliminate those problems that I, my, I had to, to with you. And that's what I'm trying to do. So don't trade numbers. Don't trade the fed. You know, those are F days. And I guess Wednesday is an F day. So yeah, I get to take the day off. Yeah, <laughs> another day off. <laughs> you, you just get to sleep in. So <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah, it's early for you there. What is it? Uh, six? Uh, not even seven o'clock. Wow, almost seven. It's impressive. Very <laughs> impressive. All right, all right, guys. I'm going to hand it off to you guys. Have a good, uh, good 
uh, hopefully you guys make some money. Hopefully there's some movement. Uh, in the Israeli markets get very tight and uh, unexciting, but uh, this week we might get some action. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right. Have a good one. Yeah, take, take care. care so. Take care. Nice. <laughs>
Uh, do I look at the 10 second chart sometimes? Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, not so much. Uh, I used to have a charting package. I was running e-signal back then and it was just a click of a button and I could change from one chart to the next and, and not lose anything on my charts, but I'm not that savvy with Ninja trader yet. And so, uh, You would think you just change time frames for some reason. Every time I change time frames, it changes something on my chart and I get aggravated with it. So uh, right now, the, the lowest that I'm trading is down to a one minute chart. Uh, when you start trading in that 10 and 15 second charts, this thing is moving. Now, if you really get bored and you want you want to learn, you want to play dial it down and uh i would not recommend betting any money on it because it will eat your lunch before you can realize it's even hungry <laughs> i mean it, it, that's a good scene <laughs> i mean you can I, I took a course one time and the instructor was trading the dax and he came in that morning and he said you know y'all don't trade the dax he says I put in an order in and it took it and I lost $800 so quick. You couldn't even blink an eye. <laughs> he said, it was quick. <laughs> he says, I put it in and it took me and I didn't even get a chance to get my stop. And I was already down 800. <laughs> well, it's not supposed to, uh, Robert, but, for some reason, every time I set mine up, it, it comes to revert back to candlesticks and I'm running bar charts and nothing against candles. It's just that I've learned on the bars and, and I can look at them and get the same information. Uh, you know, like Saul says, there is a bunch of people out there, then we can all look at the same chart and all get different answers from it. And, uh, Looks like someone's doing a lot of selling at the 05 area. Yeah. I keep seeing that reload. Yeah. If we can get to 550 or 6, then we'll see that 7, I would imagine. But we should see the 7 anyway, but what it should do and what it will do is two different things. No, what it will do and what we want it to do. Yeah. <laughs> two different things. I'm, I'm, I'm just sitting on my, my fingers right now. I'm not doing anything. See that old five area just kept, keeps getting reloaded. kind of like they don't have enough ammunition to go ahead they have to back up and get some more ammo then they then they'll charge it break it right exactly they think he's uh looks like someone's dumping something at 05 and as a kid did you ever ever have dirt clod fights dirt clod oh yeah yeah, it's kind of like a dirt clod fight. You got to back up and get some more clods before <laughs> right, you can exactly. fight again. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. It's kind of like we run up there, we throw what we got. Now we got to back up and get some more clods. No, I wouldn't short the 05. I think because uh, it keeps getting eaten up. You know, every time it gets up there, it keeps getting eaten up. Someone's buying it. So I think we're going to take a run back up to that 07. That's just my thought. Because <laughs> now we're back up to that 05. It looks like he's done. So, nope. Well, maybe. Let's 
Somebody's got a 300 lot sitting at that 05. Yeah, for like the 10th time. <laughs> yeah. The pro trouble is you don't know if they're if they're getting out of a position, they're trying to short into a position. Right, exactly. Yeah. See, so that went up at the back up to four. I mean, on a one minute chart, that 05 is just just like that five minute chart, it's all triple tops there. Now it's back almost to 500. Yeah, I see people are going to get tired and just get away from it. I still wouldn't short it, though. I can see it's coming all the way back to that 99 area. Two, four, six. Yep. It does do that, doesn't it, Robert? <laughs> there it goes. Deal five is out of the way. And back up to... Need another tick up. About 550, I think, will go up again. There we go. That 450 is going to be kind of like my line in the sand. We get below it, we're subject to go down. We get above it, we're subject to go up. Well, it's holding here for some reason. Yeah, it's set on top of a blue band. <laughs> <laughs> I really do have a blue band on my one minute chart right there. <laughs> oh, you do? Yeah. I decided, well, if I can't beat them, I'll, uh, I'll use the blue band to my advantage. So. There you go. Join the party. And uh, Oh, come on. Just got to regain that 450 or. <laughs> yeah. Mark, can you post the levels again? Absolutely. There you go. Our friend Mark took care of you, brother. I sure I'm glad you're back. <laughs> <laughs> do you uh, do you put your le do you put it down on a uh, uh, like a a word document and then just copy it and paste it over here? Yeah, that's uh, that's what my secret is. <laughs> no, yeah. no, basically when. Uh, 
or you type it in down yeah. there like you're going to send it, then copy it. Then exactly, yeah. yeah. And I just keep it, and then all I have to do is when I need some, I just hit paste, and they're there. Oh, if I would have to type them every single time, I would have quit that job a long time ago. <laughs> well, usually I'm I'm typing something else in there, and and. And so I've got to stop and change, okay, to all attendees. And <laughs> oh yeah. And so a lot of times I'm I'm typing something to Saul or come on. This is the. Uh... The battle area. This is the bulls and the bears fighting it out. <laughs> See which way it wants to go. See who's going to win this battle right now. I'm hoping for the uh, bulls. <laughs> Got to get out at 07. Well, I know that we should go back to 550. But, you know, we should go to 7 too. But it may be an hour before we get there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, if you got shorted at the 05, you did okay. You got your two points out of it. And I guess this is what Saul was talking about. We, we've we got some people in here that that uh, shorted the 05, and, uh, uh, and the rest of us are looking for it to go up. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see, where was I say we should go back to the 99 area? Forty-three ninety-nine seventy-five is the low of that candle. Well, I have a question for all of y'all out there that uses candles. Uh, why do you use candles? Is it easier for you to see what's going on? I, I don't use them and I'm not knocking them. I just don't understand. I mean, I, I get the same information. Uh, so the only I guess for I me with the bar chart, that little, just a little wick where it moves, is just so small. <laughs> and it's just hard for me to see it. And then to see where price has been is kind of, uh, you know, Again, those little tiny sticks on the bar <laughs> kind of annoy me. <laughs> Plus, you know, I've always, I've always, I've started with bars. I mean, with the, with the candles, so I just stuck with it. That's my opinion, anyways. It, uh, well, I I spread my charts out. And if I really want to look at something, I really have to uh, I only went to ninety nine twenty five. That's not normal.
I can't imagine what it'd be like to, to throw a hundred lot at something <laughs> and be, and be wrong. <laughs> oh God. At one tick. Well, we touched the 99. I've got some support at 98, 97 area. Doesn't look like I'm going to get my 07 anytime soon, huh, Don? <laughs> I took my 99 and a quarter. But I'm like you, it's just not giving me much. And well, yes, we do trade a little differently. Uh, and we all will due to the fact is that, uh, you know, before I came to Saul's course, I took a lot of different courses and I have it in my mind what I do. And one of the first things that Saul told me was, he said, look, he said, I'm not trying to take away what you've already learned. He said, I'm here to, to help you be a better trader. And so if you trade what Saul teaches you to trade, and like the the 99 it is a level now this is a lot of times he's he will give out levels and he'll pick the the safer or what he believes is the better areas and you got to understand that this man made makes his living on the floor for the last bunch of years picking areas that he can make money off of that's that's a true fact and you can't argue that he's still around and so me i came into this and i've always been on the screen i've i've been to the floor i've seen it it's 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 chaotic uh but i guess if you know what's going on it's not chaotic so uh i've taken a lot of different courses and some of the things I liked about each and every one of them and for all the courses that I've taken, they have all seemed to work for the people that teach them. The problem is, is they didn't fit me. So basically what I've done is I've gone in and I have built things that I like that I have confidence in. And that's, this is a big secret is, is it's like Saul's levels and it's, and he told me when I first started, he said, the only difference between me and you is, he says, I believe in my levels. And so he's had the experience and he knows they work. Do they work 100% of the time? No way. I don't know anything that works 100% of the time except staying out of it. <laughs> Good point. And, uh, you know, and you're not going to be right, you know. Are we going to get to the, the 07? Probably, but when it can, it can be a month from now, I have no idea. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm already out, so <laughs> so uh, am I. Uh, 
you know, we're, we're waiting for opportunities uh, to come along. And, and, and this is summertime. I mean, we've got a high VIX today. We're up, up at 1855 right at the moment. And I'm going, man, we're screaming. We have been down in the 17 levels. And when we start getting up into that 20, 25 range, things really pick up the pace. And uh, so, and I have talked to different students of SALS and through the years, and you ask them, and, and I've heard this from other people too, is, is that they'll start trading and they'll be doing great. And then all of a sudden they're calling and says, well, this thing just don't work. And he said, okay, what are you doing? Well, he has, he's changed the system. He's not doing what he should be doing. He's adding his own little twist and it's not working anymore. And so he wants to blame the instructor for him modifying it. And it's kind of like, look, we are all responsible for our own accounts. If we blow it, we don't have anything to trade with and we're out of business. And, uh, so, like he said, you know, the most important thing is to is to be able to come back and play again. You know, I had losing days. I've had a losing week. And before all of this, I had losing months. And, you, you know, you get aggravated and it really, psychologically, it just beats up on you. So... I guess probably the it's not a question of is it going to go to the 07 or not. I believe it will. But the question is, is you got to pick your spot on your entries. And the probably the most important, I'd say, is the most important thing is to know where you are wrong. Saul says, you know, I have like we were talking about the, the seven area. He said that was my secondary out. This is. You know, if, if it, if it went, didn't get there or something, I had an out. He, he's able to sit down, look at a chart, find these areas, levels, areas, whatever you want to call them and give them some leeway. And if it doesn't work, then he knows that, look, if we get past this one, I am totally wrong and I need to get out. And so, uh, when you start thinking like that and doing like that you're always protecting yourself and you know long as then after you start protecting yourself you know so what if i take a trade and i'm wrong i've got a safety net underneath me that says i'm not going to wipe my account out and i'm not i'm protecting myself for me i'm telling you this is true for me it's from me being stupid and trying to do things i shouldn't be doing i mean that's as simple as it gets one of those several calls I had with Sal when I first started a while back was when, you know, uh, I kept, he kept asking me, well, what, what was I doing wrong? And then I said, well, it got to this level and I thought it was going to do this. And I thought it was going to do that. He he said, yeah. He said, well, who told you to think? That's it. <laughs> You're not supposed to be thinking. You're just supposed to be following the system and taking the levels and that's it. If they work, take your two or three points and get out. Yeah. You know, if it goes against you two or three points, get out, wait for the next level. And it's like, but I thought, and I kept saying that to him, I was driving him nuts. And I, you know, it cracks me up because he said, well, who told you to think? You're not supposed to think. It is. You know, it, and I, I didn't really pay much attention to it. And uh, one of the courses that I took, the guy went back and he said, okay, how many times does the S, what percentage of the time will the S&P move two points, three points, four points, five points, all the way to 10? You know, 70% of the time, that thing is going to move from the time it opens in that bar to the time it closes two to three points. You have a, probably a 70% chance of, so the probabilities of 70%. One in two points, you're, you're, you're probably... 80, 98 to 89%. Now, when you start getting out past about four points, five points, your percentage drops. And as you get out to that 
eight, nine, and 10 range, your probabilities are, are dropping in the 10% range. So you probably only have a 10% chance of hitting that, that 10 point run. Right. And so, you know, so if you're playing the probabilities and you get four points out of it, it's kind of like, Hey, and you, you know, the, the odds, the odds, the probabilities and the odds are in your favor to do that. Now, if you want more, doesn't mean that you can't get more, but you're going to have to figure out a way. I don't know about you, but it's hard for me to take a profitable position and ride it way out there. I have, but you're just sitting there going, then it, then it comes back against you a little bit. And you think, Oh, I'm going to get out. I'm getting, then it takes off and runs again. It's kind of like, you got to have something. You either have to have several accounts. I mean, several uh, contracts on takes, take your profits, move your stop to break even, and say, let's see what happens. And uh, I have, but there again, it's Mark, you think about it. What is the, what are we here to do? You know, we're here to scalp. And, Take uh, advantage of ebbs and flows. That's it. I mean, I'll be, sometimes I, I, this guy made this statement one time. He said, you know, you're liable to be as short as much as you are long in the same day. And I went back one day and he was right out of 20 trades. I was 10 and 10. I go like, hmm. <laughs> and so, uh, I'm I'm looking at something here. That's another big thing you said. You've always got to take profits on the way. If you're gonna, you know, if you're trading two, three contracts, got to peel some off. Yeah. Well, you know, it, probably ninety percent of the time, probably ninety-five to ninety-seven percent of the time, even from a level, this thing will bounce probably one to one and a quarter point. Right. Now it's not to mean that it can't run through a level, but the probabilities of you getting that one, one and a quarter point are, are pretty high. And you look, you look at what these guys are doing with these, these algorithms and stuff in there. I mean, they're just, they're just, uh, uh, you know, they're just, They, they realize that the percentage, the probabilities of me making a couple of ticks on a trade that sets up is probably 99% time and a very small uh, risk factor in there. Right. And hey, Mark, you ought to be getting excited. Oh, it's already come down to it once. The blue band? Yeah. Someone's got to join the blue band army. Hey, I've done lost enough money waiting on it to get through the blue band. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well. You can't beat them, join them. Right. And, you know, that. I don't know about you, but as we – as the markets change, I've had to change. And I'm old. I don't like change. <laughs> I like things to stay as they are. Where's old Brad? I haven't heard him today. Uh, I heard him earlier when I first came on. Oh. It, uh, yeah, we're at nine. Th you know, I, I got, uh, this goes back to one of these other courses. You know, some traders trade the five-minute chart. Some people trade the 30s. Uh, 
the, a lot of the big traders, they trade the hourlies. Uh, and I don't know about you, but I'm finding that, look, uh, it, it takes a while for some of these targets to unfold. That one should take us back to that 150 area. You know, it's nice to talk with other other folks and and see how they trade and and uh, that's a good trade. I made a whole two ticks out of that trade. <laughs> <laughs> you finally get out of the ninety nine. Uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I bought the ninety nines. This is yep. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't feel bad about taking two ticks if, especially two ticks where the, it never goes against you. Now, if you abide by the rules, well, I've got to make one and a half times of what I'm risking. Well, I put the trade on and, and set a target and I was out less than a minute and it never <laughs> went against me. Uh, one of the instructors, his definition was a good trade was one that never goes against you. And it, it's true. Same way with these good levels. I mean, they hit, they bounce off of them. It never went a tick against you. Just come on down, gave you your money and you got out. I can't help myself. I ought to have my head examined. Don't tell me you're going to get back in. Well, I'm fighting an uphill battle, and I know that's not a good thing to do. But I also have that 98 area down here. Yeah, that's absolutely right. You can have six losing trades and four wins, and you're still ahead. You just got to control that loss. You know, back when I first started with Saul, I guess for the first couple of months, I did not take a trade. I'm going, nah. All I did was <laughs> write down all the numbers. And then I went back and said, you know, what am I doing here? Okay. I see every day these things working out for him. I'm going, what am I doing here? So I went back through my – a simplistic way of back testing. Uh, I went back and I said, okay. And I ended up with about a 70, uh, 76%, 70, 74 to 76% of the time you were going to be winners. And that's using a two point stop two-point target so i actually had to go two points or i had to look back at a one minute chart to see okay would i have gone that extra uh extra tick in there and uh, uh to, to get out so it, it took me a long time to run uh, a couple of months of data back through there you know one right. trade at the time and uh it's not a bad thing to do, though. I mean, I think you'll get to practice the system and see if it, you know, works for you. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you first of all, you got to believe in it. Right. Exactly. That's what I was going to say next. Yeah, you, know, <laughs> if you don't believe in it. I, you know, it doesn't do you a whole lot of good. Uh, and so it helped me. It helped me believe in it. You know, I proved to myself, look, it works. Uh. 
That's right, Robert. The only thing you can do is that's the only thing. Once you're in a trade, the only thing you can do at that point is manage the money. You can't make it go up or down. It just look, I just can, can control what I either make or lose. And, you know, and being a new trader to this, you know, you're sitting around, you, either you won't put your order in ahead of time and it runs down there and takes the first 50 or 100 and you're setting it at 200 or so and you don't get filled and it runs away from you and makes great money. Uh, that's happened too. You know, that's just part of it. There's days that Saul gives a number and it'll run up there and get within one tick of where he, his entry is, or it'll touch it and back away. It took three there and he wasn't in the top three. So yeah, it's, it's sometimes it's frustrating and it is what it is. Well, come on, one more tick. There you go. We should go one more tick above that, but <laughs> see that one worked out for you. Should have touched it seventy-five. But then you then you and and somebody made the trade, you know, we took the course, but we all traded a little differently. Now, I've learned some little ditties in that course that to me are priceless. At this. Um, and I as and I I had been trading, you know, seven, eight years before this, but it's come somebody comes along and even though you look at a chart every day or something like that, and they show you something a little bit different, and it opens up a whole new world. It's kind of like Oh man, I, uh, uh, there was one little ditty in there. I can't tell you what it is unless you've had the course, and I don't know who's had it and who hadn't. But it, uh, you know, it just you find out that you know you don't have to be so sophisticated, and uh, you can just trade off off price action. You know, price action is telling me that it should have touched that 175, but it didn't, doesn't have to, it just, it should have, you know, so I was long going into that thing there at 99 and I had another one at uh, 98.75. I'm out of the trade, made money on the trade, uh, pat myself on the back, looking for uh, another opportunity. Now, if you if you got the patience to walk in, sit down, watch, and wait, these things will unfold all day long. The levels, price action opportunities. Uh, I have areas. Uh, uh, I've got I've got years and and saws. Same way, and, and when I first started with him, Mark, do you keep a log? I do. Uh, uh, like of the numbers of everything? Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, I, I've got two or three years or better of nothing but numbers that he's given out. Right. Yeah, same here. And, uh, you know, it's so it's it's amazing. Now, I would learn, I would love to learn what to do with all these numbers I've been writing down. <laughs> create the, the Don system. Well, I don't really want to create a system. It's just that <laughs> I just, I just really like trading. Do we get our 175? Yeah, we did. Excellent. Let's see, we're coming up on 10. We may, may fix it to make a run at that old seven. I'm surprised we didn't get a little lower, though. Don't worry, there's time. <laughs> the, let's see, we opened this market at 4,450, I think, yesterday afternoon. So we're above our open. So for the Blue Banders, 
we got down to the blue band and bounced off. There's just there's just a lot of You know, it is, and I'm learning that, look, I can, I had that seven in my sights. I'd be trying to trade it. It's kind of like, and I'd be either in that market, sitting in a drawdown, trying to figure out how to get out of that hole <laughs> instead of, and one day I, I said, you know, I could have got out of this thing seven or eight or 10 times and taken a, a $100 hit at each one of them and still be money ahead. <laughs> and I'm going, so why am I doing this? I keep telling us all, you cannot cure stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it is, you know, what kills me is, is, is you know better and you still do it. <laughs> right. So, so you, you almost need a system that protects you from yourself that you can't add or some, I guess that's the nice thing about the computer algorithms. You, you can't do anything, but watch it. I don't know if you were here in the, the room one day when I told Sal, I watched a, uh, it was a YouTube video or something on TV, but they were saying that there was during any given time during the day for the s p there's close to three thousand different algorithms running at the exact same time yeah can you believe that i mean just yeah. all those uh it's just and then we trade against that and then you know we're still able to make money which is it, pretty good and you know you, you got and you've got another thing that 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 i look at or i think about a lot of times is Are you fib guys? A fifty percent. The blue band is a fifty percent fib retracement. Okay. Is it always a fifty percent fib retracement? Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, yeah, but anyway, what I was going to tell you that I started thinking about this. I said, you know. All the algorithms have to work off of a number. They just not, they're not, they've got to have some area to get long or short above something, below something for some reason. And the only reason it knows is a number. Right. So, but I tell you what really messes them up when the, when the volatility hits about 25 or 30. The algorithms quit trading. <laughs> right. They can't keep up with it. And I mean, I don't know if anyone has looked into those algorithms, but they're just, I mean, I looked into one where the guys, you have to have like a minimum of, I think, 30,000 or 50,000 in your account, but the daily drawdown was $5,000. So, I mean, that means when they put on a trade, they're taking close to a $5,000 uh, loss per trade. And I think it only trades one time to, you know, one time a day or only take one trade a day. But I mean, you know, shit, I could do that on my own, Yeah, <laughs> you know, and not, uh, not use a $5,000 stop, you know, it's just ridiculous. And then their win rate was just horrible. See, that's what I got. Um, when I first got really interested in all this stuff, I, you know, I had a broker like everybody else and he'd make recommendations and I'd buy it. And, and I'd lose money. And finally, one day it dawned on me. I said, you know, if I'm going to lose money, I might as well lose it myself. I right, exactly. Pay somebody to lose it. <laughs> I can lose it better than you can. <laughs> Is it? You know, I, I another. there was a book uh, written by the uh, Peter Lynch, the guy that started the Fidelity Magellan Fund. And in his book, he said, look, it's your money. You better learn to take care of it. <laughs> and I'm going, right, that makes exactly. good sense. <laughs> Keep going, Mark. I'll be right back. This worked out really nice. I got short up there at the O2 area. Continues to work. Give me a little more. I'll take the rest. 
And sure enough, as soon as I get out, it continues to go down. Should be a little bit of support right here around the 96 area. Maybe a little bounce off of that area. I got short up there at the old two, Don, and I get out a little too early. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. I had that 97, too. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly where it stopped. And I had to go out and get the check the garden there. It's going to need some water here in a little bit. He said, all you've been getting is rain. Why does it need more water? Well, I read, <laughs> my garden is in 100-gallon containers. Thanks, Tim. Oh. And uh, so, uh, and I put plastic over the top of them and just cut a hole for the plants. So they only get any excess is either shed off by the plant canopy or but they, you know, plus that we're at 90 something degrees every day. So uh, it just, they take lots of water. Mm -hmm. That's what I was telling Sal the other day. I can't believe you don't have any animals. Uh, no chickens, goats, nothing. Nah. We raise hay for the, everybody else's animals, but <laughs> I don't, I don't want any animals. Uh, it's just something else to put up with. It's bad enough planting the garden. <laughs> if I if I didn't like the produce, I wouldn't do it. It's not like California where we just run down and get fresh produce. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And uh, and finally, I got I got the reds. You know, to find a decent watermelon around here is tough. Really? Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can get watermelons, but they're usually not sweet. They're either that or they're green. So I said, I've had enough. So I planted my own watermelons this year. Man, I sure am glad I did. They are delicious. <laughs> Can I send some out to the room? <laughs> I mean, they're nothing to grow. Stick the seed in the ground, give them a little fertilizer. And, and uh, let's see, I've grown uh, tomatoes. Someone's asking, how far are you from Austin? Uh, about Austin? four hours. I'm right on the Texas Louisiana border. Uh, if Interstate 10 runs all the way to out to Austin, San Antonio area. Uh, I'm about about four and a half, five hours from there, and uh, I'm about five minutes to Louisiana. So you can tell how close I am to the line. Robert, you from uh you from Austin? Tampa, okay. You know, we've had uh I've talked to people from England, Germany that have taken Saul's courses. Uh I guess from all over the country. And we all trade differently.
I bet you that is some pretty country there in Caracas. I keep wanting to go down there and go peacock bass fishing. Well, round and round she goes. Where she stops, nobody knows. Uh, somebody knows, they just don't tell us. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, we're, I, you know, I, there are so many times you, you, you go back and you look at what, okay, what, what did it do last night? Okay. It did this, this, well, we should continue this during the day. No, that doesn't work. We still need to get back to that five and seven area. Then we need to get down to the 94 area. You know, I hate it when we when we're sitting right in trading right on the open that 4400 area. Yeah. So is this going to be a daily bar, an up bar or down bar? I bet you that was neat. Well, I'm kind of like Saul. What's he going to do? What announcement, Robert? All the housing? I have no idea. <laughs> Didn't they come out at night? It it might have. I like I say, I I don't pay much attention to the news. I, you should. It's all I say something. If it's a fairly big number and I'm I'm not in a trade, I'll just sit back and wait. Uh, used to trade the Fed number a lot, but it doesn't have much impact anymore. I mean, used to, you can make lots of money real quick on that Fed announcement. Lose it real quick. Yeah. And uh
But one thing I believe is this, no matter what's going on, the Fed is not going to allow this economy to go down. They can't afford to. <laughs> Robert, I wouldn't short the O2 again at this time. I think it's going to take another run up. That's just my opinion. It seems like it's got a lot of a lot of buyers are stepping in around here. Let's see. Okay, we got back to the two and a quarter. I guess we'll get to see what happens at 10. And there she goes. Okay. Well, let's see if we'll make a run to the 07. Well, I know we should get back <laughs> to the 5 to 550 area. All right. We're coming up on that. We got to get past 450. Is that where we open? Yeah, 450 at nine. Oh, it was a nice little drop. Someone must have said something. Did you say something, Don? Yeah. <laughs> I was too slow. I was trying to get some of that 44. <laughs>
Now we just sit on it and see what happens. Yeah, someone must have said something to make it dump like that. Now it's just coming right back. Are you guys having an uptick in uh, the coronavirus because of that variant out where you're at? Everywhere is. Really? Like, okay. Yeah. Okay, Maybe well, not to well. the severity of, of some places. You know, we we kind of suspected after the 4th of July weekend, after everybody started to get together, you know, about three weeks, we should see an uptick. And, right. Yeah, it seems like what has happened. Yeah, it seems like LA County's getting out of control again. And, uh, you know, I've had my rabies shot, so... <laughs> Same here. Somebody somebody put on the internet that, uh, yeah, uh, they're putting trackers in you. <laughs> I started laughing. So what's, <laughs> what's so funny? I said, well, if they're tracking me, they are one board sucker. Bill. They, I, can tell you. <laughs> I can tell them where I'll be. <laughs> No, Sal and I still think you got like a secret command center underneath your farm down there, yeah, it, <laughs> right below thing, your right below your trading room. Yeah, yeah, one thing about here in Orange is is you don't put anything below ground, not unless it's a submarine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, our, our water table's at about six feet. Or maybe you're building something in your your greenhouse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this. Yeah, hurricanes are tough on greenhouses, I can tell you that. How expensive is insurance for that? I don't mean be nosy, but I mean you don't have to tell me the exact amount, but I'm just hey, like, uh, could you even get insurance? Yeah, you can <laughs> I get mean, insurance on it. It uh, must be expensive. Uh they are somewhat. I had you know, I've been out of the greenhouse business for several, several, several years. And uh Hold on, let me let me see if I can bail this position real quick. Hey, I did good. <laughs> yeah, Don, have you started your cannabis uh, farm yet? I think you should. No, I don't know. I don't. I, I I've got several people looking at maybe buying this place to grow CBD oil and all of this, and they're telling me all of this, and I'm going, do what? So I get online and I start doing some research. It's kind of like, no way do I want <laughs> to be growing CBD oil. And, uh, well, you don't grow the oil. You got to grow the plants first. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got to, <laughs> then you the, make the oil. <laughs> well, the that's how it works. Is, even though you get certified or, or certified seed from a seed producer and you bring it in and you plant it, and it starts growing and then you're inspected. They come in and they take samples. And if the THC level is too high, you don't get to harvest it and send it off for somebody to smoke. Uh, you got to destroy the whole crop. Are you serious? Really? Yeah. yeah. No, that's when you wait till they leave and put it in your trunk and <laughs> <laughs> go sell it on the street. If it's, the THC content is too high, you'll be the, most popular man in Texas. Yeah. <laughs> and, and man, no tell. Uh, and two is you can grow it outside in the fields in Texas. I mean, I think a lot of states you can grow it. Uh, you know, hemp used to be grown for for everything from materials to rope, uh, a little bit of everything. You know, hemp's been around a long time, so. It, uh, but yeah, after you, let's see, the license for a year is about 
twelve or fifteen hundred dollars. And uh, to grow, uh, to be able to grow. Yeah, that's just the license. Oh my God! In the state nothing. of Texas, you got to have a license, and that's that nothing. And I'm not sure about the security. If you have to have a fence around your place with all this upgraded security. Yeah, it'll be my luck. Some knucklehead would break in and smoke a bunch of it. And his lips would swell up. And I'd get sued. So. <laughs> uh, this guy like who knows? It just I can't believe that ninety eight, ninety seven area worked again. I was going to take that 98 area and I was like, nah, I don't think it'll work again. And look at that. I got the 99. <laughs> oh, you did? Yeah. We should, we should still see the 05 area. Yeah, a lot of people have great, uh, I've, I've talked to several people that, uh, uh, that are distributors for it. And I said, well, I, uh, I had a knee replacement and I was in uh, rehab and, and they were selling it there. And I asked, I asked the therapist, I says, are, are people getting any results out of it? He said, you know, it's a mixed bag. He says, I got some people that put it on and said, it's the greatest thing in the world. And other people says, I can't even tell if there's anything going on. Right. Uh, I put some uh, uh, on my knee to try it. It just hurts. <laughs> the only thing was it hurts and had oil on it. That's the thing I can tell you. <laughs> Come on, guys. You know you want to go that 07. Why don't you just get it out of your system? I say 05 and it stops at 04. This one's got some legs done. Hopefully, this one's going to move back to my L7. <laughs> well, my problem is I'm already out. <laughs> I'm just going, hey, I'm not, it's, it's not giving me enough reason to want to stay long. Even though I have those targets. Well, five is probably a really good target. Five, 550 area. I think mean, if we make it up to there, we should see our seven. See what happens at four again. Saul had a level at three. I know this has got to be confusing for people coming in. We we got Saul's levels, our levels, and something we make it <laughs> <I know>. up there. <laughs> And we'll give him something to talk about tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> he says, what you guys do to my room? Yeah. We created our own levels. <laughs> See ya. Well, Don, it's that close to that eight, eight o'clock hour here in California. And my kids are up. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one of them on my lap already. Well, just let her drive. She may, she may have a secret yeah. to it. <laughs> oh, just remind me to tell you that six thousand dollar mistake she playing with my mouse. One of these in, in the <laughs> one of them. Yeah, really, is the truth. She was she was playing with my mouse and I wasn't looking, and she uh, put on a trade. And next thing I know, it was down like actually it was ten to be honest with you. And then I kind of traded out of it a little bit. And I got it down to six, and then down to five, and. Finally, I was around 5,000. I said, it's, I just got to get out of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I think she was like a year and a half, two years old. 
So that's okay. I took it out of her college fund. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, there is a, a, when I first started in this, I was uh, doing an optionetics thing and we did attend these seminars and these, these young kids, they didn't look like they was much older than about 18, 19 years old. Anyway, they were, they worked for optionetics and this and that. And you'd see them in a seminar or two every now and then. And a year or so later, you, you'd, you'd go back to them and you'd ask, them, what happened to so-and-so that, that were, said he quit, went to trading on his own. That's all he's doing. <laughs> I'm going, kids are living the dream. Yeah. Well, you know, when I got out of the, the greenhouse, uh, the storm tore up the greenhouse says, okay, what am I going to do? I got to do something here. And I said, well, I like this stock market. And besides that, that's where all the money's at. So <laughs> right. Just go where the money's at. It sounds real simple. It's the hardest way to make easy money. I know. Isn't it though? Yep. And, uh, you know, it, it, I guess what I was trying to tell everybody this morning is, is it does not have to be hard. It does not have to be stressful, but you're going to have to have figure out some way of doing it where it's not hard or stressful. You're either right or wrong. And, and this is where you're wrong. Right. And then, then the rest, after you get to that point, then the rest, you just, you kind of enjoy coming in here, sitting down and says, Hey, I'm going to snatch a hundred bucks out of this thing. <laughs> right. And, uh, I don't know about you, but I've had some jobs that, that it took me forever to make a hundred bucks and had to work a whole lot harder. One fifteen AM in Australia. Oh my gosh. Have a good one. An ad? Man. Thinking that's going back to sleep. Man, if we if we didn't put you to sleep, nothing we Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think we lost half the room. <laughs> oh man. All right, Don, I got to feed this little one. Okay, Mark. Have a good one. You too, buddy. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, take care. Thank you. Ah, Mark posted the numbers. Bless your heart. We run into kind of like a little area at that 450 area. more. Solace levels the day after the 03, the next area up there is going to be at 10.
Yeah, we up here at our five area. We need to touch 550. There we go. Well, I hope Mark's still looking. Looks like he's going to get his seven. Well, guys, I'm going to be in the background back here. I will be back here in a little bit. i got to go take care of some stuff outside. Talk to you in a little bit.
Well, looks like we made it up to the ten area. Guys, we're trading up at the uh, 4410 area. Just remember, keep your stops in. This is area that we have not been in before. I guess what I'm trying to say is don't let this thing get away from you. I'll be in the background if anybody needs anything.
Yeah, this is Don Jenkins. I'm moderating in for Saul today. Uh, I see that you're new. Uh, there are places to get more uh, acquainted with the setup. Uh, did uh, can you see the numbers? Did uh, let me see if I can't. Let me type in the, the numbers for you today, and that will give you some idea what we got here. Resistance is going to be at 3, 10, 18, 24. And the pivot is going to be yeah, let's see. yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear us? I'm typing in some numbers for you right now. Uh, and 69. Let me get that up in there for you. See. All right, there we go. Uh, yeah, we've uh, we've just been sitting in the background. Uh, these are the numbers that Saul gave out this morning. He he had to leave early today. He'll be back in tomorrow. Uh, you notice we have a pivot. That's kind of our midpoint. And in all these areas, we expect the market to uh, respond, get a reaction from these areas. So basically what we're looking at is like, the 10 some of us may fade it a little bit and go 950 some of them may have a number at 950 10 and 1050 just depending on your account size and stuff but we're, they're probably using about a two to three point stop depending on your personal preference and we're expecting expecting a two point uh rotation at all and we're probably looking to get anywhere from three to five trades a day, usually in the morning. Usually by this time, everybody's just about either gone to lunch or uh, sitting on the sidelines. Uh, we had some more numbers uh, today up, up there around 12, and the 12 worked out really well. Uh, And so uh, we've been trading around around these numbers all morning. So every morning it, he'll come in at about 8.30. He'll come in just right before the market opens, and he will give you the pivot, the resistance areas, and the – and the. Uh, I gave you resistance there. That should have been, I'm sorry, uh, support where I've got resistance down there at the bottom. Uh, control B. Uh, let's see if I can fix that up for you. Yeah, that's the way it should be. <laughs> Maybe that's a little less confusing. I'm sorry for that. Walking and chewing gum is not my long suit.
but most of the most of the action starts at a little after eight thirty, and usually by ten thirty, eleven o'clock, you know, it winds down. Uh, so there are us who trade in the afternoons, uh, and that's okay too. It, there's, there's, there's not a thing that says, oh, you can't trade in the afternoons. It's just that you have to be aware of the after, afternoon markets are more directional. And so the levels tend to, uh, they work depending on what time the afternoon they are. Uh, some days they work really well. And other days they're uh, they're marginal, but with all trading, uh, we don't know that they're going to react at these levels. Uh, we just have to know that okay, if they don't react, we have a stop in, which I call it our safety net, and that just protects you. That's all it is. It's a protection against the market going against you. Okay, it didn't work out. Wait till the next one. And there there are other trades that happen price action trades that happen during the day all hours of the day and and they're all tradable and so uh you know if it does if a trade doesn't work out you know it just it doesn't work out but you know you're protected so it, if you'll come back in the morning it uh what part of the world are you located in? I say world because we have people from Australia. Uh, oh, okay, you're in Toronto. So you're on Central Time or Eastern Time? Eastern, okay. Well, we, uh, we start at 8.30 Central, so that's going to be 9.30 Eastern. Uh, so that'll give you some idea of by in the morning just show up at about usually I get here about somewhere between 815 and 820 and I mean you're welcome to come in early but usually Brad the first guy that you'll hear in the morning is Brad Brad kind of controls the room gets everything set up for Saul as he comes in and like I say I'm just filling in for Saul to uh, he had a function that he had to attend to today so he should be back tomorrow. And, uh, and if I can, uh, I need some. Uh, we're looking at the, the ZB. Okay. There, there's actually the far left screen. That is the, that is the bonds. Now, Saul was a, a bond trader way back there. Uh, and so he, he looks at the bonds. Uh, I don't trade the bonds. I'll glance at them every now and then, but I use his chart. What you see is what I look at. But, you know, used to there was a, if the bonds were going down, the S&Ps were going up. But that's not the case anymore. Things have all changed. The middle chart that you see is an ES chart. It's a one-hourly chart. Then the one on the far right is also an ES chart, but it's just a five minute chart. There's nothing fancy about it. You've got a set of Bollinger bands on there. You've got a green band. And in his course that he teaches, uh, the Bollinger bands, uh, basically the, the blue band is the center line of the Bollinger band. And but do we use Bollinger bands? No, I think we just use that center line more than anything. Uh, and we use the green band down there. Uh, other than that, you know, we use the levels. It like I say in, in the ZB, the bonds there, uh. I don't know enough about them 
to uh, to tell you that there's a correlation between one or two. I'll tell you what, tomorrow when you come in, ask Saul. He'll be more than happy to explain it to you. I just think that, you know, he spent many years uh, trading bonds on the floor. And uh, so that it would make more sense to, for him to tell you than me because – I know telling what I did, it would probably be wrong. So I'd rather get your explanation straight from him. That way you, you'll feel better. But, but welcome. Uh, I'm glad to see a new, new face in the room. Uh, like I say, I'm, I'm, I'm just a trader. Uh, I just happen to be the one making noise in the afternoons here for today. And, Usually by this, from this, usually from about 11 o'clock all the way into the close, you don't hear anything. I mean, we've already got the numbers. Uh, you've either made your money in the morning, you've shut it down, you're going to do something else. Uh, or, uh, you know, you're just waiting for the afternoon. And so, but if there's any more questions, don't, don't hesitate to ask. I'll answer what I can and I'll direct you to the, uh, no, actually, I actually, uh, I actually, tra we trade directly off the screen on the, the S and P contracts. Uh, we're not trading any options. Uh, we're trading direct future contracts here. The E minis, these are E mini S and P's. That you're you're seeing on the on Saul's charts. But now we this this room is basically designed to come in and scalp the market to trade the ebbs and the flows. So uh, we're subject to be long the same amount as we're to be short. It's not a buy and hold situation. It's, it's get in, put your stop in, put a target in. And if you want to manage it after that point, and you got multiple zone, you you're more than, you know, everybody's going to be different. I guess what I'm trying to say, because we've all got different experiences, different risk tolerances. Uh, We'd like to, <laughs> but we usually we're shooting for a minimum scalp of two to three points uh, with a two point stop. And a lot of I'm using this as a vague term, depending on the volatility of the market. The market's kind of slow. So anywhere from between two to three point stop is, is a good stop area. If that's going to be too rich for your blood, then two points it is. And, uh, like I say, we're all different. We all have different tolerances and different account sizes. And uh, so you just have to adjust that accordingly. But yeah, a lot of times uh, we'll, uh, we'll come in in the mornings and as soon as he gives us the numbers, uh, in most cases, I will go ahead and put in orders to buy or sell at those levels. Now, the market may have not gotten to those levels yet but my order will already be in the queue in line because it's first come first serve when it hits it and it only wants the first 50 and that's it. Then if you got in early enough, you get filled. If not, then if you, if you wait a lot of times you, you do not get filled. And a lot of times it hits that level and blows right through it. But you know, that's why we have the stops. And so I guess the, I've been preaching all morning. So the, the, the most important rule about this is know where you're wrong and, and just take your hickey and get out. You'll be money ahead in the long run. I promise. Cause I've, I've, I've been through those big old drawdowns thinking, Oh, it'll come back. Uh, the platform, as long as you have somebody to clear your trades, uh, I'm using interactive brokers. Saul and them are using another one. Uh, Ninja traders out there. Uh, I use 
my charts are not the same as Saul's charts. I forget the name of his charting outfit. You know, we have a charting package, and then we have a place to clear our trades, to put our trades on with, and they will do it. Uh, I actually am running Ninja Trader charts. Uh, I've ran eSignal. Uh, I've had Metastock. I've, I've had a little bit of everything out there. Uh, so just whichever one you're comfortable with, you just need somebody to clear your trades for you. And uh, so if you're, if you're uh, the people you trade with, if they do uh, the E-mini futures, uh, then you're good, you're good to go. Uh, I don't think there is a magic... package out there says oh man you got to have this platform uh, uh i guess i come from the old school it just we came up when a lot of this stuff didn't you know it's developed over the years now we have algorithms and and everything's trading on top of everything and just uh but one thing about it is they can't trade they price is king <laughs> Wherever that price is right now, that's where that bar is setting. I mean, when you when you look at these charts that, that we have up on the screen, I mean matter of fact i have i have the bollinger bands on mine i don't use the the two red lines in there i went in and i put on my indicator and i turned them white so i don't see them so i see one one line and that's that blue line and that green line and that's it uh, other than that it's just something to well, you're more than welcome uh like i say come back in tomorrow and uh Saul can uh be glad to fill you back in he's really so don't hesitate to ask him questions he loves to answer them and uh he's a world of knowledge sometimes if you if you don't get exactly what you're looking for in the in the way of a question ask it again tell him you're not quite understanding and he'll be glad to he doesn't get upset he just he's a good guy Take care. Guys, I'll be in the background if y'all need anything.
Hey, a couple quick uh, programming notes. Hey, Afunik, are you back? Let me know in chat. Use the chat feature to respond. Livna, let me know if you're back. Kevin D. Hey, Kevin, let me know if you're back. Kevin. Kegler, let me know if you're back. Hey, Joel. Joe J., let me know if you're back. Joe J. Hey, Jay, how are you? Avi, how are you? Hey, Anna Palm, Adam. Hey, uh, Jay, oh, I'm sorry, Avi, did you want to talk about Sal's mentoring and his coursework? Just let me know back in chat. Use a chat feature to respond. Um, anybody else have any questions? Don't hesitate to ask. If you need to sign up for Saul's friends and family, I have the discount link and I can send it to you. Just raise your hand and I'll send it out to you. Here are the uh, levels and zones. I just post them again. Hey, Kegler, are you back?
Hey, Arnie, welcome. Hey, Arnie, uh, how can we help you? Just let me know back in chat. Use the chat feature. Hey, Joe J, let me know if you're back. Joe J, Keegler, Kevin D, let me know if I can help you in any way. Livna, let me know. Funic, let me know. Anapalm, Avi, Adam. Oh, well, that's great. So, um, do you have a trading platform? I think I, you had come in before, right? Oh, well, that's great. And do you have a trading platform? I'm not sure if that's what you're saying yes to. Oh, okay, great. And... Um, Are you looking to learn how to scalp the market in general, or we're focused on trading the S&P 500 E-mini futures contract? We like it because it's pretty easy to trade. You know, one of the things to note, and you probably know this already, is that trading is pretty difficult to make money with. That if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. You know, one of the things that uh, are offered here based on this educational opportunity is to help new traders get set off on the right foot and then work with them as they apply, learn a trading skill, and in this case, price action trading, and then make it your own. And the goal is to come out the other side knowing what you're doing and applying what you know and getting better at it and getting better at it based on interacting within this service. Now, if that's something that you're looking for, we can continue the conversation. You know, what individuals do is they come in as guests. So you've been coming in as a guest. Then they transition into a friends and family person, which is nominal. You know, it's 100 bucks a month. And then from there, you have the opportunity to be guided and taught, you know, how not to make all the mistakes. I mean, you're still going to make mistakes, but try to avoid as many as possible. And then um, look to develop a skill set that you can practice and then have somebody work with you as you're practicing the skill set, which is price action trading. Yeah, I mean, futures are pretty risky. Um, you know, there's great rewards and there's also great risk and you have to really become a disciplined, um, trader, right? To be able to do that. That's where I think, um, the opportunity comes in.
So I can send you out the link to get you rolling and focused. Um, and it's a discounted <clears throat> opportunity when it comes to usually it's three seventy nine a month. It's on for a hundred a month. I don't think it can hurt anybody. Um, what's your broker? Uh, who's your broker? Trades. You're in Canada. Okay, great. So I would ring in, or however you communicate with Quest Trade. I would find out what the opportunity is with them to trade the S&P 500 E-mini, you know, based on their charts and how they clear their trades, find out, um, you know, what the costs are and that type of thing. We also may have an opportunity for you to talk to a broker here, uh, not our broker, but just somebody that's, that um, handles some of our customers. You know, we're independent of that because we're not registered, so they would work with you and get you set up for um, trading and see what the different options are for you based on being in Canada. So I think that's worth the conversation to have. You know, and again, it all comes under the heading of our friends and family, so take care of that, and then we can work with you on the other stuff. You know, we might have a couple of ideas for you. Um, that's why I had mentioned uh, the other party. I mean, I think the first thing you should do is uh, contact Quest Trade. And then, depending on what you find out, you know, you should sign up for our friends and family so you... A, get the discount and be your part of the family. And then we can help you work on the other stuff.